Uh, my name is Albert Ingebrecht. Uh, I am a web developer at SuretyBonds.com. Um, I'm here today to kind of talk to you a little bit about uh, what programming is like um, and what you guys kind of can come to expect here um, if you're going to take this up. I gotta go and watch my notes real quick. I apologize. Um, yeah, so programming, what exactly is it, right? Um, so programming is basically, uh, really simple, it's giving a computer a set of instructions to do, right? And very, very small steps for them to repeat over and over and over. Um, it's a pretty basic idea, right? Uh, but out of every, like, basic idea comes some sort of complexity. Um, I'm going to kind of go and kind of veer off from this for a second. I had a uh, experiment that a second grade teacher did for me. It was really illustrative as to like what programming really is. Um, it's a really basic idea, right? So we have a person that has no idea how to make a sandwich, right? A peanut butter and jelly sandwich, more specifically. Um, they have no concept of how to open the things. They don't understand what a sandwich is. They have no knowledge of what a sandwich is at all. So the uh, teacher gave out index cards. You go and each person would write down a list of steps to do to make this sandwich, and uh, the teacher would do literally what was written down, right? Um, so, so one student would get, oh, open bread bag, done. She'd open the bread bag, pull out two pieces of bread, cool. Put uh, put knife in peanut butter. Well, peanut butter's closed, right? That didn't work. Um, someone said, just pull out, get bread out of the bag, and she didn't open it. She just like ripped it open and pulled the bread, uh, the paper piece of bread out. So. Computers are the same way, right? They're not smart. Computers aren't smart at all. Um, what they do is they do things very quick, very simple things quickly. Um, so that's kind of like the idea behind, uh, you know, really simple instructions that uh, that we can that go uh, that go on. So yeah, um, you know, break taking these large problems, breaking them down into small instructions uh, is a big part of programming. Um, and other piece is kind of building on other people's code, right? You know, if you think about it, like think about all the things you can do on a computer, right? You can access the internet to load a web page. Um, you can run a program that can that you log in with that goes over the internet and somehow validates that you have certain games that allows you to download and play online with. You know, it'd be really crazy if you had to build every small tiny minutia of a computer, right? If you had to go and uh, if you had to go and write how to access the internet every time, no one would get anything done, right? So this is where other people's code comes in. Um, using other people's libraries, using other people's uh, frameworks to kind of allow you to kind of build, uh, build up a program of your own without having to write the really nitty gritty details. Um, so yeah, um, so we're gonna take a look at an example. <coughs> I'm gonna try it, we're gonna put together like a small web page. It's gonna be really basic, just a page that Display some text, maybe add some sort of interaction. Um, we want it to be pretty, right? We want it to be something that looks nice for everybody. Um, and we want to have some sort of interaction with it, right? We don't just want a pretty web page that sits there and you don't do anything with it. Um, but luckily, thanks to some people that write these co this code and release it as open source so anyone can use it, it's really easy to put in, to make something like that with a minimum amount of code. Um, so here's one example, here's an example. I thrown together. Um, so if you notice, right, we have like this box here. We have this title of, hey, check this out. Um, so if we look at it, uh, there's there's actually only three files that I included here. Um, and it allows us to do some cool stuff like this, right? We can close it. That automatically does it. We can close it with the button. This has a nice little fade effect. It has like the the little drop shadow there in the background. Like if I had to write this from scratch, this might take me up to a week possibly, right? There's a lot of moving parts here and there's a lot of stuff you have to take in consideration, but just including uh, Bootstrap, including uh, uh, jQuery, and uh, just a small file that allows this modal to come open, you can have what you see here today. Um, and this took me maybe 10 minutes, you know? Um, being able to just throw this stuff together really quickly using uh, external libraries is a great tool that programmers use. Um, and it's not just like front-end developing like this. Uh, you know, you do that with like 
other more in-depth type of things here. And if we wanted to look at the, uh, if we want to look at the code here, it's actually quite simple. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So if you look at it, right, I have one line of CSS and a bunch of like HTML that's kind of like I didn't have to like do any really too much with this to have this work. So, like I said, so really, you. Or did I close out of the entire thing? Um, so yeah. Yes, I did. All right. Just one second. Where's the notes? All right. So, but yeah. Um, so the other part, right? Programming languages. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard this before. Uh, programming languages, just like any other language, right? It has its own rules. It has its own syntax. It has its own sounds, um, and that dictates how you, how and what you'll write uh, with programming. Um, basically, a computer takes these, like this text file of, of weird English, and it just compiles it and mixes it up to make it into machine code, right? That actually runs on the computer or the CPU. So, um, depending on what programming you relate, uh, depending on what type of project you'll do, you're going to do will tell, uh, kind of dictate what type of programming language you'll use. Um, you know, if you needed to write something that was like really low level, say, um, say you had a device you need to go and monitor what frequency something would be, you know, you'd have to work with really, really low level uh, languages to be able to uh, handle that. So. But yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of options with programming too. Um, you know, say if programming interests you, but doing a lot of like hardcore math and doing a lot of deep dives and a really complex code, code isn't your thing. You know, just like thinking web pages look pretty, you know, that's an option. Um, you know, if you want to go and be a guy that, you know, goes crazy and learns all the super hard to do things and become a wizard, that's totally, totally an option as well. Um, programming is kind of what you make of it. Uh, depending on what you want to do, will kind of uh, dictate what you'll uh, learn and stuff. So, you know, sometimes you'll need hard, like some depending depending on what you do, you might need uh, really hardcore math skills. Um, but depending on others, you may not need math skills at all. So, um, don't let the don't let the math portion of it or um, the science portion of it scare you off or anything. Um, so, what do I do? Um, yeah, I said I was a web developer. Um, what does that actually mean? Um, well, on a day-to-day -day basis, what I do is I make my coworkers' days easier, right? Um, I develop a kind of like a back-end web page application thing um, that only employees see, right? We have different departments. They need to send files to each other. They need to be able to communicate. Um, and that's the type of thing that I work on. Um, I work in a specialty insurance company, which is sounds and is kind of really boring. So. Um, the actual business itself isn't uh, super entertaining, but uh, the actual programming portion, portions of it is. So, uh, so yeah, let's kind of like look at what does a web developer work with, you know, what type of uh, things do they do. Um, obviously, the first stop is HTML, right? Um, it's kind of like the skeleton of your web page. It kind of dictates, you know, what things will be displayed there, but it doesn't describe how it looks or what uh, type of interactions you can have with it. It's only just kind of there to give your page form, right? Um, so yeah, um, next to CSS, kind of think of this as like the skin, um, right? This is supposed to tell you how the HTML is going to look, right? In this example, right, we have a button, we set the background to red, make the width 200 pixels, and we make the uh, text color blue, right? Um, these are more some of the more straightforward CSS rules. Um, you know, they have other CSS rules that are a little weird, like you have a uh, hover CSS. So say if you wanted a button to be red, but then if you wanted to hover over it, you'd want it green. Um, you can do s little, uh, really simple stuff with that, uh, with CSS. So, uh, and also another thing too is what's great about CSS is that there's a lot of like front end libraries, right? So say if you're like me and you're not very good at making web page pretty, right? There's people out there that that's what they do, right? They make this library that makes these pet web pages look a certain way and they release it for free for everyone to use uh, if you so choose. So, uh, you yeah, know, in that previous example, I wrote one line of CSS essentially. So, um, that's definitely possible uh, if you use my, or different libraries. 
Um, the last part, I guess, in the front of uh, this development thing is JavaScript. Um, JavaScript's kind of like the muscles of a web page. It's the thing that allows you to do things on that page. So say if you uh, click on a button and a window opens, right, in our last example, that requires JavaScript, you know? If you want to say every time they hit the enter key, I make the background different or I change this element, well, that'd be JavaScript too, right? You're trying to add interaction to these pages. Um, there's a couple examples here, right? The function, when you call it, there's like a little box that opens up. It'll say there's a problem. You know, add a couple numbers together. together you give it a couple numbers and it returns the sum. Um, pretty self-explanatory stuff there. Um, you'll find too uh, <coughs> that as the page complexity increases, right? So say if you have, like you start off with a really simple web page and you start adding bits and pieces of their, their um, functionality there, you'll find that the JavaScript's where you're gonna be spending a lot of the time there. Um, but yeah, even like, the, if you only wanted to work with the three, these three files, right? If you only want to work with this type of development, you totally can. Um, you know, you, there's a few jobs out there that you could do this with, right? You could do it be a front-end developer. Um, that's the type, that'll be a person that'll work really heavily with front-end JavaScript, making sure HTML and CSS are set up correctly. Um, you know, I, you do web design. Um, if, you, if all you want to do is make web page pretty, what you can do is spend your time make a mock-up of how you think a website should look, you give it to a programmer, and then you give them back with an actual product. Um, and that's actually just a job title in itself. Um, some people just focus on that. Some people just focus on like the interaction of a, of, a, of a website, right? Like, so say if you're trying to make a set website to sell something to people, right? You wanna force them, or you wanna guide them down into a web page that's specifically made to make them buy, right? Those type of things where you interact or you study like the interaction between someone and the web page. They're called UX developer. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a wide variety of stuff you can do uh, just doing front end development. So yeah, um, next part is servers, right? So whenever your browser loads a web page, right, your browser goes off to a server and says, "Hey, I want this web page." The server responds with an HTML file. And it'll say HTML file say, hey, I need this CSS, this JavaScript stuff, right? But what about the actual page that gets sent, right? How does it how do the P or how do they know what files to send, what data needs to be in there? And that's where the server comes in, right? Um, you can think of a server as just kind of like these little computers that stay connected to the internet. Um, they listen for people to request pages to them and they'll give these front end files out uh, for your web browser to, to actually make the page with. Um, <coughs> yeah, it, uh, basically your, your browser takes these files, does fancy machine voodoo magic, it makes the pages you see. So, um, yeah, servers can be written in any sort of language. Um, so, if maybe if you've done any programming in your spare time or read up on it, um, you know, you can use C++, you can use uh, Python. Um, if you look at our examples up here, um, like Ruby on Rails is a uh, you would use Ruby for that, but it's like a framework to help you really easily make web or web servers. Um, Node.js is a way of using JavaScript on the back end, like on the server side of it. Um, so if you got really good at JavaScript and wanted to break into server development, you could really pick quickly pick up Node.js and start taking off. Um, Flask is also a, is a Python library. Um, it allows you to make web apps and uh, C sharps and other. is a Microsoft language that allows you to do stuff with web forms and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a wide variety of like languages and uh, methods you can use to write a server uh, logic. So, um, so yeah, there's developers that only work on this too, right? Um, a, lot, a lot of programming is being specialized. So there's just people that only focus on writing these backend services that like, you know, if you ever need to save data, right? So you have an HTML page, right? Say if you load Facebook, put a post in, right? You hit save, what happens is that data gets sent to a server and that server processes it, makes sure everything's okay, saves the data for you for later. <coughs> yeah, uh, these type of developers called backend developers. Um, make sure the website web, uh, the website's secure. Um, whenever you hear about hackers breaking the website, um, they're attacking the server, right? They're getting access into these these machines that are connected to the internet permanently, and they get this uh, you know user data and stuff like that. So. That's what a back-end developer works on mostly. Um, and the last part about a, 
web or web page is obviously like saving the data, right? So what's the point of having a Facebook if you put it in a status update, right? And it goes nowhere. Um, that's where databases come in. Um, on a service level, databases are just really easy ways of saving data on a disk, right? So that way, if like say if I save some data and the server restarted because something or other, um, it would still be in the database if I saved it to a database. Um, not only that, databases are really good at getting data quickly, right? Because you have websites that expect to be have these this data with literally within milliseconds. So uh, databases are really really good at storing this data in such a way that it can get it back really quickly. Um, but yeah, in larger organizations, um, I'm gonna need my power thing real quick. Out of my bag. I just realized it's zero percent. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's databases. Um, some larger organizations, they uh, they have they can employ people called a uh, database administrators. Um, these are the type of people that. Oh man. Um, these are the type of people that uh, they're the ones that make sure that. Uh, that database comes back quickly. Make sure that people that add new or add queries to the da our database that it's efficient and doesn't affect other people. Um, but yeah. Um, whenever you add all these three different parts together, you get a full stack developer, right? Um, full stack developers aren't necessary. Don't necessarily uh, know the um, the stack as deeply, right? So if like all you do is databases, you know a ton about databases, right? You understand the internals, how everything works. Um, full stack developers, generally speaking, uh, don't have that depth of knowledge. Sorry. Um, so yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm just logging into my computer. Um, so yeah, um, so I guess really the next question is, you know, what do I do from day to day basis, right? Um, <coughs> a lot of what I do kind of comes down to like three parts, right? You have people that come to you with either problems or things that they want, right? And uh, say, for example, you know, hey, I would like a link to this page on from this page so I don't have to search for it later. Um, or say, if um, every time I update my status, my profile picture gets deleted, right? And what happened? And like you go and take these problems and you analyze them a little bit, right? You say to yourself, uh, "Okay, well, I know that whenever I update a status, somehow this sets my profile status. So let's dive in, see where exactly this uh, this updates at. Try to analyze uh, analyze what's going on with that." Um, but yeah, and then the last part after spending the time to research it is to you know actually code it. Um, sometimes research can be take a little bit, right? Um, programmers don't, actually honestly, programmers barely know anything. Uh, <laughs> we're just really good at looking up information when we need it. Um, so, you know, if someone comes to you and says, hey, that we upload files, right? Say if I wanted this uploaded file uh, to be displayed directly on the web page, right? You'd have to look up, hey, how do I go and, uh, how do I embed a, a PDF or an image directly on a web page from another server or whatever? Um, so yeah, this is firing up again. And I guess the last part of, uh, of the day to day is like just learning more. Um, big part about programming is constantly learning. Um, you know, there's always new programming techniques, there's new libraries, um, there's all sort of, of uh, things to learn. So even if you don't have anything to do, um, you know, it's good to kind of just spend your extra time uh, you know, dedicated to kind of learning more stuff so uh, you stay on the cutting edge. Oh yeah, so I guess why programming, right? Um, well, how does editing CSS, HTML, JavaScript files sound fun at all? Um, I mean, even the pr programming tutorials are super boring, right? They're like, oh, well, here, I want you to add these numbers together. Great. I want you to do... Uh, you know, store these numbers in a list. What here's an object? How you store data? You know, it's all kind of boring. Um, so where's the fun in it, right? Um, I guess the best part for me is like there's absolutely nothing's off limits, right? So if you have an idea that has to do with the internet, you can build it, right? If you have a good enough understanding, 
um, you can take these ideas and act on them and make them a real product. Um, and not a lot of not a lot of professionals can say that, right? You could say, well, as a constructor or a, a con person that does construction, I may want to build a cathedral, right? I'm not gonna have the money to do a cathedral, right? It's a little ridiculous, right? It's gonna take a lot of land, take a lot of materials. Well, with programming. If you wanted to do that, you could spend 10 years of your time just like making this crazy complex app if you really wanted to, right? Um, there's really nothing holding you back from um, acting on any sort of idea that you come up with. Um, so yeah, another thing too is uh, you make businesses really, really easily. Um, one of the things that, uh, there's like, uh, one of the things with programming is that there's a real big, it's called startup culture. Um, basically startups are these businesses, right? They have two, three people, maybe four, um, and what they do is they make a really small proof of concept, right? They say, I think we can make money. I think if we make an app that does X, Y, and Z, people will pay $10 a month for it, right? So uh, if these three or four people will get together, throw the website together, and see if they get any customers, right? And that could take a couple weeks, right? A month, maybe two months, and you have a, a working prototype, you're getting paid money. Um, that's what's really cool, you know, if you come up with an idea that you think can make money, um, <coughs> it's totally do doable to create a business off of it. I know of a couple friends of myself that, you know, they've, uh, they have their own businesses, they've started off doing a little bit of coding on high school level and kind of took it from there, went through a little college and was able to make a business out of it, which is uh, really neat, you know, being able to like work on your own time and not really have to answer anybody. Um, you know, another thing that's cool about programming, you make your own video games too. That's, uh, I think everybody has wanted to make a video game at some point in their life. So, um, yeah, you can use, uh, some people code stuff from scratch. Some people use uh, tools like Unity or Unreal or Source Engine. Um, but at the end of the day, understanding programming makes making video games a lot easier. So, um, but yeah. Uh, so, and the best all, for me is to uh, is the fact that I can help people, right? Like, you know, I don't know how many of you have had jobs before um, or worked, um, but a lot of times, at least whenever I was working, I found that whenever I was working, I was kind of just going on the grind, right? I'd work to go, I'd go and you know stock shelves, you know, refill freezers, but really I wasn't making any differences, right? Um, what's great about what, I, what about programming is like I could go in, for example, my work. Right, someone could have something that's super annoying. Right, every time they do, every time they have to do something, I have to go through four different screens and click around a whole bunch. It takes them a ton of time. Right, I can look at this process. Right, they can tell me about it, and I can just say, okay, well, I can make a page that does all of this at once. Right, and save people time. Um, you know, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of uh, times where, when you're working, you can make a big impact on the company or the people around you. And that's what's great about programming is that's. Uh, that's definitely something that can happen. So, um, so yeah, another part, great part about programming is, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need to have a degree to get into this. I feel kind of bad saying this to everybody, but because uh, it is quite difficult to get into programming without one. Um, if you're able to do, if you're able to go to college, if uh, doing programming is something you want to do full time as a job, uh, you know, you can. De I would definitely suggest going through degrees and getting a degree. Um, people are basically, there's tons of jobs out there and not a lot of developers, so if you go, if you graduate from college for, with a computer science degree, um, you know, if you interview for long enough, you're almost guaranteed to get a job. Um, but if you're the type of guy that kind of learns on his own, if you're the type of guy that likes to spend week at, weeks and weeks on your off time kind of learning your, learning a single off project and really want to get good at it, um, programming is something you can do, with, do that with. Um, especially so with web development, web programming, because uh, you know, there's not a lot of entry level, or there's not a lot of um, things you need to do to get started, right? You go and pay five bucks for an online server and you have a website. So, but yeah, um, like I said, it's not necessarily something that you wanna do, but it's possible. Um, another thing that's cool too is uh, a lot of, for a lot of people they can work from home. Um, you know, I know I believe of quite a few programmers that they actually don't have a house, right? They don't have a single place that they stay all year round. What they do is like every, what they'll do is they'll spend a month in Spain, okay, and they'll work from Spain for a month, right? Then they'll go off to Asia, and they'll live in Asia for 
for a month or two, you know, just logging in through the internet and doing the work from, from there. Um, some people are just live the nomad lifestyle and they're able to because they're able to work really effectively from their own space. Um, and programming is uh, kind of unique in that, in that uh, because I don't know of too many other like careers that you can just work from home at and be effective at work. So, but yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, average day programmer starts off with kind of like a feature, um, doing research and what needs to be changed to get that to work, and adding code to do that. Um, another thing too that I didn't cover here is uh, you also, whenever you write code, you want to write tests. Um, so say if you're saying, okay, I want to make something whenever I click this, this opens, right? Well, what happens if you add another button? What happens if you add another tab? When you add tests, it's basically saying, I expect this code to do this when I run it. And it'll catch if it doesn't. So um, that's just something that you end up doing whenever you're a programmer. So um, like I said, last part is more research, more learning. You're constantly on the trial for new techniques and stuff. So, um, but yeah. Uh, Resources, right? Um, I guess if you if this is something that you find entertaining, uh, if something that kind of sounds interesting, um, this is definitely something you can learn on your own. Uh, <coughs> there's a couple a couple resources I'd suggest or I suggest to you that are pretty good. Um, both Code Academy and Code School is good for learning uh, development if you don't really know much about it. Um, it really good. It does a really good job at kind of ex explaining to you like the introductions, the basics. And builds up from there. Uh, I do think Code School is a little better, just because I like their videos. But uh, Code Academy definitely works as well. Um, and Code Academy is 100% free, as last time I checked. So uh, yeah, if you're trying to go and do this for a long term, uh, you might want to check that out. Um, what's also great about web development is you don't necessarily need to install anything to work on it, right? Um, you could actually do things like live coding, so where you're adding HTML, you're adding CSS, you'll see the changes live on the web page. Um, you can do stuff like JSON. So, uh, had this happen last time. Alright. Alright, so. You can do stuff like button, hello. We could add some CSS to it. So, say we wanted all buttons to be red. Let's make it light red. No. Maybe. All right, we'll make it red. And let's make it to where. You do stuff like this, right? So, you have oh, no, background. But yeah, you can do like change this code, watch what happens live, and uh, you know, kind of just play with it. Um, there's also tools as well um, to kind of, if you wanted to like learn uh, serve, do go into server development. If you want to check that out, a lot of times with servers, uh, programming servers, uh, you have to install a lot of um, uh, tools. You have to set up a lot of stuff. Um, they actually have a thing called c9.io, um, and it is uh, kind of like a, a thing that like allows you to set this up online. So you have like a little, if you notice here, you'll have a little code editor. Um, you can run servers from here. You can write server code and have it run and get responses back live. Um, so <coughs> if doing uh, server development sounds interesting to you, uh, c9.io is pretty nice. Um, so yeah. Um, so I guess the other last two parts are, you know, where do you go when you have a question, right? Um, programming is really weird, um, and it's very error prone. So what happens when you can't get something to work the way you expect it to? Um, luckily, there's a site for that, um, a site called Stack Overflow. Um, basically, it is a Q&A site, right, for programmers. So we'll sign in real quick. No, maybe. All right, I'm not signed in. But basically, you'll see like, um, you know, you'll have a set of questions. This is a bad example, but 
then then uh, programmers can answer your questions for uh, for points and stuff, and you can answer others and stuff like that. But Stack Overflow is a great place for do it for having your questions answered. Um, GitHub's pretty good too. Um, you can actually explore new open source libraries from GitHub and kind of look and see what kind of new cool stuff's on the horizon. Um, you know, uh, you can also kind of look on this and look this stuff stuff up on Stack Overflow as well sometimes. So, but yeah, those are kind of like the basics for kind of learning on your own. Um, <coughs> if this is something that you kind of want to try out, um, just kind of get it back to me after the after this and uh, talk to me, and I can kind of give you some more resources. But this is kind of where a good place to start out at. So, yeah, I'm um, sure I've bored you enough with this horrible presentation and computer turning off halfway through. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Any any wonder like kind of what it's like or what I personally work on or anything? Alrighty. Can you show us what you actually do? Like a website that you've actually made? Or yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so for work, uh, I do, like I said, I work on a program that no one really sees outside of me, or um, me and my coworkers. Um, but this is basically it. So basically, we have a, a website.